Hi, today I have an extra special treat for you. I'm going to tell you all the secrets about how a power plant works. And we'll make use of it in our simulation class. So this would be pretty exciting. Um, here's how a power plant works. We take some components and it provides some resources to us. Um, and we use those resources in different components. So components two and three, then maybe provide some other resource to component four. Um, all we're doing inside of a power plant is we're taking some components, some raw products, and we're creating some inputs to some device, and that device is going to create some outputs to somewhere else. Um, and every time we do that, we're basically moving energy from one place to another. And that's how a power plant works. Um, maybe it wasn't what you were expecting, but uh, that's how it works. So. In our course, maybe our end goal is that we want to try and get our boiler up and running. So it looks like I've got my flame started in the boiler and it's up to pressure. So that's great. Um, problem that we have is that we can't just go and turn on the boiler. We have to be able to supply the boiler with all of the resources that it needs in order for us to think that it's going to run. Okay. Just like if we were going to go and try and start our car, well, we need to make sure we have things like fuel, we have to have a battery that works. We have to have our key. Um, we have to have a lot of things in order for us to expect that our car is going to work. Same thing with our boiler. We have to supply it with everything it needs in order for it to run. So if we think about what our boiler might need, um, we have a few things. So here's our boiler and it's going to need some resources. So one of them is that it's going to need some water. And we have our feed water pump and tank to provide that. We need some fuel and we have a tank with some fuel in it that can supply fuel to the boiler. Um, we also may need a, a fuel pump to supply it. We need some air, so we have a forced draft fan to supply air to our boiler. And we need to be able to control it, so we have controls and instrumentation that allow us to operate this piece of equipment. Okay. But that's not all we need. So if we think a little further, all of these components need some resources too. So for instance, our feed water tank may need to be refilled on occasion with some distilled water or some treated water. Um, our controls may need things like compressed air or other, other um, supplies in order for those to operate. And a lot of these components are going to need electricity. So we have some either an electric source or maybe our own generator to supply electricity to all of these components. And if we go any further, what we'd find is that there's tons of inputs to all of these systems. So we all of a sudden have a whole bunch of inputs that are needed in order to get to one goal in our plant, which is to operate a higher level piece of equipment, our boiler. So we have all of these rows of tasks and auxiliary systems that we need to essentially scaffold on top of each other or underneath each other in order for us to operate a large complicated sort of high level piece of equipment like the boiler and that's going to be our goal over the next little bit so for the end of this course here's what we're going to try and do we want to take a look at the different auxiliary systems in the plant so we've already talked about some ways that they work. So we've looked at heat exchangers, we've looked at pumps, we've looked at some components, we've looked at controls. Um, now's our chance to put this all together. And we want to take a look at all of these different systems and get a kind of an understanding of how they work. One of the things that we want to know is what are the resources that they need and what resources are they going to provide. So get a good idea of what are these components, really what is their role within the plant. And just like I started drawing out that sort of process diagram to say, here's what all those components need, that's what we want to be able to do. We want to understand that complicated spider web that we're creating of the interactions between all of these different systems. So try to get an appreciation for that what is the general process diagram for this plant that we're running and every plant is going to be different and it should be a good activity for you to understand what when you go to a plant how is everything interconnected 
And then as our simulation task, we're going to start up the equipment and show how we are ready to start up the boiler. And starting up the boiler is one of the things that we do in our semester two course, and we spend a bit of time working with the boiler. In order for it to run, we need all of our auxiliary systems up and running first. Okay, so I'm going to do a little demo for what we're going to work on this week in Simulation Lab. Okay, so just give you an idea of what we're going to do. So today what we're going to concentrate on is getting our air compressors running. And if we think about what our air compressors are going to do for us, um, well, they're going to create some compressed air. And that compressed air is going to be delivered to a series of air receivers. Okay, so that's going to be our goal is to try to fill up these air receivers. Now, if we think about what our air compressors need, it's going to need a few things. So one thing that's going to need are some controls to be able to control this. So either turning it on or off or else automating the air compressors. It's also going to need some electricity. So this machine runs off of electricity. So we need to make sure we have a supply of electricity available for it. We also need a couple things. We have also cooling. So we have those air coolers, um, the heat exchangers that are going to need water flowing through them in order to cool. So we need to supply fresh water to our air coolers. And the fresh water system also needs to be cooled using seawater system. So we have quite a complicated pathway of systems just to be able to put air into a receiver. So we're going to explore that with a little simulation exercise um, for this week. Okay, so in your directory, you're going to start the air compressor um, simulation. So the air compressor exercise. And here I am. So I'm at my plant and my air system is, well, not working. If I look at all my air receivers, uh, I don't have any pressure in my receivers and it doesn't appear that anything is running. So uh, if I want to concentrate on getting this running, um, I could try to turn on my air compressors and start filling up my receivers, but what I want to make sure is that I have my resources that it needs available. And if I remember, I need some cooling water, I need electricity, and I need controls. Um, let's start with electricity. The way that I have you set up right now is that you do have electricity available. Uh, but we're going to confirm that. So we can come over here to our main switchboard um, starters. And this shows us all of the electrical panels inside of the plant. And right now I'm being supplied by a voltage of 440 volts. So I have my electricity that is being supplied to these panels and then it can be distributed to a number of places. And uh, it's set up so that you have power that's available today to air compressor one as well as air compressor number two. So we can use both of those air compressors. Okay, so that's good. We've confirmed our electricity. We also have controls. We'll deal with that last once we get to starting up our generator. Or sorry, our air compressor. If we follow through our back to our start air system, we see we have this pathway for water. Okay, and we have water that's going to go to start air cooler number one and start air cooler number two. Um, and so I'm going to open up the valve that feeds water to these coolers. Unfortunately, that's not providing me any flow through the coolers, so I'm going to need to backtrack through my systems to try to establish flow. Okay, so we've made it to this page and we have a fresh water system. And to give you an, uh, an idea of how this system works, we have a series of pumps down here in the bottom left or bottom right and they are going to pump across to the bottom left and I have all of my banks of heat exchangers and my air compressors are here. Okay, From there water is going to flow up and through and I'm going to pass through my coolers. There's a whole other section of this pump, 
plant, which is over here, that we're not going to be using. Okay, so we're going to ignore the section up here, and what we're going to use is the bottom sort of left and bottom right kind of side of this plant. All right, so um, I'm going to establish my pathway. So air compressor, I'll open up the valve there. I'm going to open up this bypass valve. I'm going to go through cooler number one. I'm also going to open up my pathway at the bottom here, the bypass pathway. So I have two choices, either one that gets cooled or one that doesn't get cooled. And then it's going to make its way down to my pumps and I'm going to turn on my auxiliary pump. I can see now I have some water that's flowing and it is making its way through my air compressors. And if I go back to 59 and check, I can see that I have cooling water that is being supplied to my air coolers. Okay. Because this system can't reject heat yet, all it can do is pick up heat. So it's only picking up heat from the air compressors. I need to be able to get rid of heat, which means that my FW cooler needs to be able to be cooled. So we looked at this last week. It's a plate type heat exchanger. And on the other side, um, number one, or page number one for cooler number one, we want to make sure we have cooling water that's able to flow through it. Right now I don't have any. So in order for this to be able to flow, I'd need to establish my pathway through it. And we're going to work through our seawater system. So we're going to pull water. Um, let's pull from our low suction sea chest, which means we're going to need to open up a valve. And that's going to lead to our pumps. Um, I'm not going to turn the pumps on just yet. I'm going to pass through. That goes through my cooler. Pumps up through. And then I get to this valve. From this valve, I want to open up both pathways. And I should have a complete pathway for water to flow. I'll turn on my pump. I could use my auxiliary pump. And what I should see is that I have some flow that's been established and it's making its way through FW cooler number one. So I have cooling water that's being supplied to FW cooler. It's then providing cooling here, which will remove any heat that's picked up from my air compressors. And my air compressors now have sufficient cooling capacity. Okay, so they have electricity, they have cooling water, the last thing is just controls. So I have my air compressor here, and if I try to start it, um, it seems to be unresponsive. Okay, we know we have electricity going to it, and it won't start. What I need to do is switch it over into local, and that allows this on button to operate. So if I switch it to local, and hit on, then my air compressor will turn on. However, I don't want to turn it on yet um, because I haven't followed through my pathway of air. So important for me to follow through my pathway of air and make sure that I am making my way to one of the receivers. And so maybe I'll try filling up start air receiver one first. So I want to make sure I have a pathway to a receiver and then I'm going to turn on my air compressor. And my air compressor is now filling up start air one, and we can see the pressure starting to rise. At some point, that pressure is going to get too high in the tank. And so we want to do one last thing, which is to be able to automatically control this air compressor. And so what we'll do is we'll switch start air compressor number one into remote, which means the control system can take charge. And in order for the control system to be activated, we put it into remote. But we're also going to go here to our panel directory. And we're going to go to page 102, our pump and compressor control. 
and from there we're going to turn our start air compressor one into auto and now our pump will or our compressor will automatically turn itself on and off as needed and since my pressure is still low it will still keep running and once it's hit its desired pressure then it will turn itself off Okay, so running the air compressor system to get to the point where we've supplied it with the resources it needs and be able to provide the output that we need is going to be our goal for this week. So let's see how we do. Uh, and, and hopefully everybody's able to make sense of these systems and work their way through starting up an air compressor.